thanks for inviting me and hopefully I will also then add some perspective in terms of shifting focus a little bit from um, the global developing world uh, and to the richer part of the economies that are still under development of course uh, and, and in this case Sweden and, and here the question is oh, if we care about wealth then we would also want to care about what happens with wealth when it's passed on to others. Uh, in, 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 in this paper we look at one particular channel of this uh, passing on, namely the inheritance process. So looking at many of the countries that we, have, uh, that we are in, in, interested in and also looking at the, the work that Jim and Tony and, and co-authors have done, we see that wealth is becoming increasingly unequal in, in most countries of the world, uh, not at the global scale, but uh, for, for the country uh, of interest now, Sweden, um, wealth has, has become more unevenly distributed. And this is one of, the, one, one of the arguments for why we want to look at wealth and why, why wealth may be then uh, more, and uh, looking at the implications of why wealth has become more unequally distributed. We, have also looked at uh, the role of inherited wealth in general. Inheritance as, as a source of wealth has become more important over the last decades. This is both uh, for, true for Sweden, but as uh, Thomas Piketty has also shown, look, he has also looked at the, uh, France and some other countries where the, the, the flow of inheritance has uh, become at, at, at the general level become more important. And the question then we, we put in this paper, how does this matter for the wealth inequality among the living? This question is not new. We found this wonderful quote in a book written by the economist Wedgwood in England uh, in the late 1920s. He says that inheritance perpetuates, perpetuates and may intensify inequalities arising originally from other causes. And the extent of, this, of its influence on distribution remains an open question, which cannot be decided merely by theoretical reasoning, but requires, in addition, something in the nature of a quantitative analysis of the relevant facts. And in fact, as it turns out, this question is still highly valid. We still know quite little about the implications of inheritance on the distribution of wealth. Okay, of course, working on the Swedish environment, we have one key, key advantage, namely we can use the registered data that also Jim mentioned are often of, of high quality when you want to look at the distribution of wealth. So, in particular, we will employ a new database on Sweden where we have registered all inheritances, in fact, for, for the entire population over several years in the 2000s. And this is simply for tax reasons. We, we, have, we have had an inheritance tax and the tax authorities have collected all the estates and also then uh, and, and calculated the, the inheritances to each of the heirs and then the, the correct inheritance tax. In this database then, we have all descendants and all their heirs family heirs and non-family heirs. Focus in this analysis will be in the early 2000s when the data are, are, are at their best. And the data that we have are not only then uh, from the source of, of the deceased, namely the estate, but also we, we have data on, on the heirs and their wealth. And, the f and we can also follow these people over time. So we, we, we have a panel. So we, we in fact, can then observe what happens to the distribution of wealth among the heirs before they inherited and after they inherited. And this is at the heart of our analysis. We want to look at the before and after and to compare those who inherited with those who have not yet inherited. Okay, what we find. So first of all, this is, a register analysis of inheritance that have not been able to have, have not uh, existed uh, before. Before, 
people have uh, used estate uh, samples collected from one particular town or, uh, or a country from, from different sources, or they have used computer simulations, uh, which, may, which are based on, on assumptions, uh, well, well founded mostly, but nonetheless, none of the previous studies have looked at registered data on inheritance. So having just the stylized facts coming out of these data are very important. So inheritance are very unequally distributed. We, uh, th that's one of the key aspects. I'll show you more about this. We also find, a bit uh, remarkably, that inheritances actually reduce the, the cross-sectional inequality among heirs. And I will explain why shortly. We look at the role of inheritance taxation. Uh, there are some institutional aspects of the Swedish case uh, where we, you want to look at how the inheritance tax uh, was structured, but what we find is that it was not very important on the whole, and if anything, it seems to have reduced, or have increased the level of inequality. And I will explain why shortly as well. We do also look at the mobility, so how people change position in the wealth distribution after having received the inheritance. And we see that mobility increases after uh, as, co as a consequence of, of, of the uh, inheritance. So as you can see, we, we have some very specific aspects of inheritance and the role of inheritance, but what we claim is that these data are, are so are, 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 are advantageous from this point of view that we can actually look at causal effects by comparing treated persons, those who inherit, inherit with those who are not treated and that is, not in, have not inherited. So really coming down to a very precise causal implication of inheritance. In, at the heart of that is the focus on cohorts. So to understand the idea is that in each year, a, 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 sec, a, a fraction of the population dies. In Sweden, around 1%. And they receive, and they have heirs. And all the people who, who inherit from these deceased will then, be, uh, will then represent the full cross-section of heirs in society. And given that everybody basically inherits some point of, of their life, maybe they inherit nothing. In many cases, actually, this is the case, or very small amounts. But everybody, have, everybody has, a, a parent, has parents and, or other relatives who will pass on something. And, for, from that perspective, looking at the heirs is actually to look at the population of, of, as a whole and focusing on the point in time when they inherit. So the cohorts that we look at are those who inherit, and they can be very young children, young children, or they can be fairly old, even very old, if they inherit means from their children maybe, or their brothers or sisters. So. The counterfactual is not a world without inheritances. So uh, th that's a one, uh, one discussion that we have in the paper. What would, hap what would that counterfactual, in fact, be? Uh, that we would have a 100% inheritance tax, for example. Um, we could think, then, that there are processes come, uh, that, that come to play in terms of how people accumulate their wealth. But in our, in our case, we have a situation where the counterfactual is when people have not yet inherited rather than they will never inherit. So we, we, we make very little uh, uh, influence on, 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 the, on, the, on the, so, so to say, the, the plausible world uh, in our analysis. Okay, coming now to the data. And I, I, I would suspect that this is a representative picture for many of the developing, development, developed countries in the, in the world. So to the left, you have a picture of, of the distribution of estates. So the balance sheets of those who deceased in, in this year. Uh, no, we have all the cohorts. We have, or we have three cohorts, uh, uh, 2002, 2000, 2003, and 2004. And then you would have, uh, to the right, you have the, the distribution of, of inheritance. And he, inheritance here are then um, uh, defined as the, the, the means that the heirs get, which, of course, are... are Relatively, you know, they, they map on to the estates, but then uh, at, this, at the estate level, you have only the distribution among the deceased. But as you can see, these distributions are, are very 
skewed. We ha you have Gini coefficients around 0.8, and you see there's a big uh, uh, mass point around zero, where most people, most people live without anything, and then you have um, this fat, this tail going up to the right. Recall now that in many of the st standard approaches in, in economics, for example, the well-known life cycle models of, of, of Modigliani, Bromberg, and, and others, uh, they actually claim that people should have uh, lump, been, been t uh, totally lumped around zero, namely that they should not leave anything after, uh, after themselves when, when they die, because uh, this is being consumed away as, as retired. But as we see, we have, in fact, a lot of positive inheritances and positive estates in Sweden at this time. You can also see that uh, the heirs are on average 55 years, which is then also something which is fairly intuitive, that people die in their early 80s in Sweden, and their children, most of the times, are, are in their 50s. Okay, looking then at the graphic analysis. This is one way to show the very uh, intuitive way to show what is the effect of the inheritance on the distribution of wealth. So here we have a picture of co the cohort 2002. So those inheriting in 2002 uh, and the distribution of their personal wealth in 2001 and 2003. So we can see that the, the, the uh, the densities are, are fairly similar, but there are some differences. We have a, a somewhat fatter tail uh, in, in the solid line in 2003 than we have, and we have a smaller share of people uh, being with no net wealth uh, in 2003 than in 2001. We could then from this say that, okay, there is a shift, but this shift could come about for many reasons. Maybe, you know, the, there are calendar year reasons, so we can have business cycle effects on people's wealth, of course. Let's compare the same years, but with another cohort, the cohort 2004. And this is then people who, would, who will inherit, but not yet have inherited. So for them, there, is see, there seems to be a small, small differences, difference over time, but it's much smaller than it is uh, for those who inherit. Uh, and we can, when we look at the, uh, the differences in density, it's, it's clearer that uh, we have here the, the cohort 2002, they have a sm larger decrease of, of, of density around with people uh, with no wealth uh, as, uh, when they inherit as, as compared to those to, in 2004. Uh, who have not yet inherited. Then we also can m see whether maybe this is just a general pattern. Uh, then we can compare this to a, a, a period two years earlier when none of these cohorts have inherited, neither the 2002 cohort or, uh, or the 2004 cohort. And here, as you can see, the patterns are very similar for both cohorts as, it, as compared to the previous case. So this is an in in indication that something is happening. And in fact, it actually captures the, the, act, the, the full distributional effect, although just in graphs. The next step is then to see what happens when we look at some, some collect, you, you, normal or standard collect, uh, collection uh, of uh, in inequality measures. So the Gini coefficients is obviously the most well-known of those. Uh, there are some questions about using the Gini when you have a lot of zeros and even negative uh, wealth. Uh, we, we, we claim that it's possible, but we, in, we also look at coefficient of variation, we look at percentile ratios, we look at top shares in our analysis. I will here only look at the Gini coefficients in the interest of time. So this is what it looks like. So this is the Gini coefficient of personal wealth among heirs, heirs who have not yet inherited, and heirs who are inheriting and afterwards, after they have inherited, between the years 1999 and 2007. So the picture shows a downward trend of inequality of, of wealth in this, in this group of, 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 of heirs. This downward trend could be explained by a lot of things, but typically people are accumulating wealth, so there are many life cycle of, uh, effects of these 
particular individuals. You see a fairly long, a large jump downwards in uh, the first year. This is the year of the dot-com bubble burst, when a lot of high-tech stocks became use, uh, worthless uh, for many of the rich. So you would have people uh, losing out disproportionately in the top end of the distribution, and that's the genie getting fairly much lower. And but what is striking here is that the cohorts uh, in, that would be inheriting in 2002, 3, and 4 follow very much the same pattern. Uh, in in, the, in between 1999, 2000, and 2001, and they would actually look following fairly much the same pattern, both in, in trend but also in level. Uh, in, in the years in, at the, after they have inherited, in 2005, 6, and 7. But looking at the, the years when they inherit, so we see fairly striking patterns, namely that this, down, the, this lower line with, with the circles, this is a 2002 court, those who actually inherit uh, after 2001 and during, uh, in two, 2002, you can see the genie decrease much more for them than for the other cohorts who would not have inherited yet. Looking then at the next year, you would see that uh, the 2003 cohort in, in squares take this jump down, whereas the 2004 cohort, who has not, still not received inheritance, inheritance, remains at the same level. Going one year further, you would see that the 2004 cohort, when they inherit, they experience the decrease in Gini coefficient, whereas the 2003 cohort does not. The reason is that the reason for why we have a, a, a decrease over two years is that for, for heirs with parents who die in the end of the year, uh, it takes some time until the, 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 the capital actually gets transferred to their personal accounts. So you would have this effect dispersed over two years for, for heirs, those who have, uh, who heirs who, uh, with, with parents who die during 2002, because with late, dire, late in the year dyers, the money would not come until the year after. But, but the, the effect then is still very consistent. So the full uh, effect on the genie would be over these, two, on, on the 2002 court, would be over these two years, and then what we estimate is then compared to the other cohorts. Over, over these two years, and then con con controlling for, for the fact that uh, the others are then also inheriting at some point in time. But I think this picture gives you a, a very concise view of the causal effect on the, on the cross-sectional wealth distribution of the heirs upon inheriting. But why then do we see this decreasing dispersion of wealth among the heirs. So this picture gives you the intu intuition of that. It shows you the dispersion of, of inheritances over the distribution of, of heirs across these sides, when, when they are distributed in these sides. So the, 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 uh, the triangular uh, uh, line shows you the mean inheritance over the distribution of, of heirs. So what you see here is that the average level of inheritance gets higher the richer the heir is before inheriting. That, that is, if you're a rich heir, you are more likely, on average, to, to receive a large inheritance. And this is, of course, uh, you know, something which is very intuitive. Uh, but when we look at the, the other line, we see that the relative importance of the inheritance. So this line shows you the size of the inheritance as a share of your pre-inheritance wealth. It goes the other way. It's much higher for people with little wealth before inheriting than for those who do inherit, who, uh, who, inherit, uh, who have a lot of, of wealth before inheriting. So the relative importance of the inheritance is, is larger for relatively poor heirs. And this captures very much the, the effect on the Gini coefficient. Oh yeah. So looking at the inheritance tax, 
the Swedish tax in in these years was scaled down to be to be relatively small, both in levels and also in level of progressivity. But we, we find, in fact, that the, the effect on, on, uh, on the distribution is that it seems to have contributed somewhat to an increase in the level of, of the Gini coefficient. When we compare, uh, we do it in different ways, when we compare the, the, the post-inheritance Gini with and without the inheritance tax, we can add it back. Of course, this is a, you know there is a there is a behavioral effect that that we, we do not account for, but uh, mechanically uh, we see that it seems to increase the level of inequality a little bit. Of course, there are caveats of when it comes to the tax analysis, and we are still working on this. So. Uh, Draw, you know, the, the, the general conclusions from inheritance taxation could be affected by the fact that the, the tax was fairly flat in Sweden at this point. At this point. And, uh, and so on and so forth. There are some points on that. But the, the intuition behind this result is the same, namely that we have, as we had in the main, main result, we see that the mean inheritance tax paid by the heirs is increasing in the size of, of the pre-inheritance wealth of the heirs. So the heirs who are richer before inheriting, on average, pay more inheritance tax uh, than those who are poorer than in, before inher inheriting. But when we look at the, 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 the tax receipt uh, as a share of pre-inheritance wealth of the, uh, of the heirs, it's larger for, for poorer, relatively poorer heirs. And this is this line. So we would have the same uh, relative versus absolute differences in, in terms of the effect on the, on the wealth distribution of heirs. We also look at the mobility, where, where the people switch places in the distribution. So this plot, uh, this picture shows you a collect, uh, collection of uh, uh, mobility uh, measures and using basically the same difference in difference analysis as we used in the main, in the main exercise. And what we see here is that the mo level of mobility increases upon in inheriting for the 2002 cohort and for the 2003 cohort when they inherit, and in relative terms for the 2004 cohort, whereas there seems to be a downward trend in, in all over when it, uh, in terms of mobility. So, and this is perhaps not so surprising that people switch places relatively more often when they inherit. Uh, and, uh, but this is just merely uh, establishing that fact using this causal analysis, as we claim. OK. Of course, there are many more things to say. We have a paper, which is a working paper on the web on, on these issues. Uh, and I, you know, I was. Uh, not humble enough to, to mention that there, uh, you know, many many of the papers that are out there that have that have addressed these issues before, uh, of which there are people here in the audience who have actually contributed a lot to this literature. But this is a, this is an ongoing question which is of quite some interest. So what we then look find using these register data, which is our key advantage in, of this study is that we find this compressionary effect on the wealth distribution of heirs upon inheriting. But of course, uh, in, we, 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 we are still working on this analysis and we, are, we look forward to hearing your comments uh, because of course there are issues that you want to think about. What about, the, we did not think about, uh, or we have not still not uh, looked at the distribution of the tax received to, to people. Uh, uh, so how would that affect the wealth distribution if, say, all the wealth inheritance taxes, uh, inheritance tax receipts would be distributed to the, to the people at the lower end? What would, what would, would, he, would be the counterfactual uh, ex thought experiment if, that, if uh, you would tax all inheritance or uh, all inheritances, and then redistribute them, perhaps progressively. Um, of course, then that raises another question. What, what would happen to people's willingness to accumulate wealth in the first place? Um, anyway, uh, 
there are a lot of issues on this agenda. I think this, the role of inheritances, inheritances for, for wealth inequality has it's been, been, been discussed before, but it will be discussed more and more over the years and, and for, for reasons that I started out saying, namely that wealth inequality is increasing and, and, the, and the aggregate size of inherited wealth in the economies are, is also increasing. So we want to think about these questions more and more over the time. Thank you. Thank you.